rally solo sale. We have been here in Marina di Valletta, um, just chilling, catching up on some work. The um, main town is just over in here. It's the hub, it's where all the museums, the restaurants, it's where you want to go and hang out. So this is a really cool little marina to yeah. saute into there. It really is. Saute. Well, I'm not sure. It really is just a walk Go. away and like uh, Riley's the history nerd and I've found myself just absolutely blown away. Like we are next to a fort. There is a fort just outside. It can be annoying in Europe like going from marina to marina to marina but when you are surrounded by the most insane history mm. in the entire universe. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah so Elena and I are solo now. Troya has done his tour of duty. He was um, a fantastic help for us around the Mediterranean, but yeah. I think he's going to do his own thing. He's looking at buying a boat or he's got quite a few ideas, so yeah. be interested to see uh, how he goes. But he was a fantastic help. He taught us so much and, you know, we taught him how to sail and it was just a really good experience overall. And we love you, Daniel. Thank you so much for your help, honestly. We are off to Africa. Yes. What's that song? Those little rains down in Africa. Yeah, can you <laughs> cover that? Yeah, I should, shouldn't I? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to Africa. We're super <laughs> excited. <laughs> Firstly, Malta. Yes, I could spend a very, very long time in Malta. Two things that we're going to do while we're here is I bumped into a young girl by the name of Justine or Justina, who's a Polish girl who bought a boat for one euro and she's going to refit the entire thing herself. So we're going to go and hang out with her a bit, hopefully help mm -hmm. if we can. Yeah, I really want to go scuba diving while we're here. I heard about this wreck, it's massive apparently. There was an explosion in the middle of it and they sunk it. Um, and yeah, it's just perfectly laying on the bottom. So there's like, it's world class diving here. World class wreck diving yeah. in Malta. Yeah, so that's what's up. <laughs> The next day, the dive centre picked us up from the marina and we headed into their shop to grab some gear. Then we drove to the other side of the island where the shipwreck was. Today we'd be exploring the remains of the 115 metre long Amel Faraud, lying on the ocean floor at about 35 metres deep. Due to its size and depth, we'd only get to see the front half according to our camera shy dive guide, Marco. <laughs> yeah, hey, come on. The history of it, where did, where did the shit come from? Where did the shit? No, guys, I cannot do it. Want some help? The Um El Faraud was built in 1969 in England and used to carry fuel between Italy and Libya. In 1995, she was docked in Malta when an explosion occurred in the centre tank. Nine people unfortunately lost their lives. She was considered a write-off due to structural damage and sat in the harbour of Valletta for three years until they decided she would be better off under the surface as an artificial reef. So they towed her around here and laid her to rest. We found the middle section where the ship was separated either due to the explosion or from how it was sunk, or both, I'm not too sure. We got to go inside and explore multiple levels of the ship, keeping an eye out for any sharp bits or loose objects. I get this indescribable feeling every time I'm exploring an unoccupied or historical place that humans once used to wander.
occasionally barracuda and squid are seen around here, but we weren't so lucky today. Marco, the eel bit me. Huh? The eel bit me. I got bitten by the eel. What is this it? eel? The, mor the moray eel. No, see, no. <laughs> <laughs> I tripped over. I, I cut my foot the other day. Oh. I was drink. I was drinking. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Marco drove us back to town, stopping off at a few of his favourite sites on the way. Then off we went to catch up with 22-year-old Polish legend Justina. Where are we? That's a good question. In a quarry. We're in a quarry. Now it's just a boss. She was taking us to see her sailboat One Eater she'd purchased for a euro. Yes, that is one euro. Awesome. This boat has soul. I'll wait until you get inside. <laughs> <laughs> Prior to the purchase, One Eater had been in the water in a marina here in Malta. But Justina got her hauled out and put somewhere cheaper for the future refit in the middle of the island in a quarry. Everything is rusty. <laughs> That's a really proper lock. Ain't no one breaking into that. No one, for sure. Oh my gosh, cute. I think I'm more lucky than... It's all about luck, I would say. Why? It's not a really common story to get a for one euro but if you wouldn't try then obviously you wouldn't get it so exactly. it's you need to try but and how did you get the boat to one euro? so I've just seen an announcement on the net that there is a guy who owns quite old boat and he wants to sell it but it was like it was written like he wants to sell it to the person who is young and who have a dream so university is not the really thing I wanted to do and I've seen this announcement and I sent an email to the guy. It seems like I'm quite the right person, so if I want to see the boat and talk about details, then I need to go to Malta. So it was like in winter mm -hmm. and the flights from Poland to Malta are extremely cheap. Like I paid like 20 euros, so Whoa. I had nothing to lose. I was really impressed. I didn't expect that the boat will be in this condition because it's quite old boat. It was, it, she, was, she was built in 1971. So she's pretty old and she's really well kept. So mm -hmm. I was expecting something more like a wreck. Me too. <laughs> and it's <laughs> no. not. So I was really surprised. And the owner and his wife, they are such a lovely couple. And they just asked me what I can offer, like what kind of price I can offer them. Because they didn't want to tell me the price. But at this moment, I had no savings at all. Mm -hmm. So I just said that right now, I cannot offer you anything which would be sufficient for this kind of boat, for this size, for this condition of the boat. So <laughs> he told me, it doesn't matter. It seems like you're the right person and let's make a deal. <laughs> I will give you this boat for one euro. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I started crying. <laughs> I bet we were sitting. We were sitting like on the table having a dinner, and I started crying because I wouldn't expect something like that. I have goosebumps. Honestly, <laughs> that's amazing. That's so, so nice. Of we them. signed the uh, we signed the contract, and then I fly back to Poland. Realized that I have a boat, <laughs> and I have to change my life. So I left my university. I moved to Malta, I started to live on my boat because it was in the marina and I was like working in a random bar and then I started working on boats as a day worker and everything went really good and I got this permanent job and I can, I'm able right now to save up money. And we come for the day to hopefully get our hands dirty and help Justina with the job on board. But it turns out what she valued most about us coming along today was just our advice. She asked us everything from very technical yachting stuff all the way through to just standard sailing destinations. We spoke for hours and tried to help her out as much as we could. And 
so Justina, this is a pretty um, like I I think this is a really huge undertaking. What did your parents say? What my parents <laughs> said? <laughs> Well, they didn't say that loud, but they weren't happy that I moved here, obviously. But they think I'm a bit crazy and insane. But <laughs> they might be right, but I'm not sure yet. <laughs> we'll see. Like we'll see in a few years what's gonna happen. Maybe I will end up like a old lady, extremely creepy, living alone on my boat. Who knows? With, with a lot <laughs> of cats. With yeah. a lot of cats. Or... Still in the quarry. Yeah, it's <laughs> worry like 10 years later. No, I, I really don't think so. How many years do you think it will take you? To be able to sail on mm. a boat? I would say like reasonable two years. It's kind of a big project because you need to... Like when I'm changing the mask, then I also have to change like all the deck design, all the winches, everything. Like. The first step to start this work is like to do welding and sandblasting and it's the first step and I need to know everything about mm -hmm. the later works because if I'm doing the welding and I need to have prepared everything like for the mast so I need to know exactly how the lines for the sails will be going on the deck and mm -hmm. like I obviously uh, some people have to help me because I have no idea how yeah, to design course. all these things yeah. but I already realized how amazing and helpful people are anyone that wants if to learn anyone hand. have a aluminium mast I would I would like to have it <laughs> yeah <laughs> so aluminium mast um, a place to put the boat place to have it on the hard where she can work preferably somewhere with a bit of shade general um, advice just general advice, someone who can weld yeah, and... Uh, particularly I, Malta I based at, at would some be really point, based. At some point, every hand will be helpful when I will actually start working here, like for mm -hmm. painting, removing stuff, stripping the inside or anything. Cool. And, and we'll, we'll put, put your email... Contact details down there oh, if okay. anyone would like to contact Justina. God, I'm feeling really weird. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Join us next week with new faces before we go against what everyone told us and sail over to Tunisia with a new crew member and a few dramas on the way. I give it up for you Whatever it is that's driving us apart Is it the words I use Or is it the ones that I still find so hard to say